Meer Fagredien Hi everyone <laughs> um, uh, My name is Radir Fagredien um, I just graduated from high school So yeah, I know a lot of people around here are too So um I am going to U of M Dearborn to major possibly in psychology. Uh, I want to bring more awareness to mental health and help people who are in need um, and to get the help that they need, obviously. Uh, I'm not very good with words on the spot. <laughs> I orchestrate my stuff before I come on stage so that I know exactly what to say. So this is new to me. <laughs> um, today I am going to be presenting a poem to you um, called Dismissed. It's about ending high school and just the journey from the beginning till the end. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna get started with that. I have not memorized it, so I have to read it off, but. <laughs> All right. This is dismissed by Khadir Fakhreddin. <laughs> I always loved the idea of growing up. As a child, there was something about being an adult that piqued my interest. I was never warned that when you grow up, you start to grow out. Like when I was no longer carried to my bed after falling asleep on the couch, or my favorite shirt wouldn't fit on my growing frame, or that my foot wouldn't go through the shoes I first tied my laces with. I didn't know that I would outgrow my bedroom, the pink kissing my walls peeling to the undercoat of a worn out beige, or that I had to quit my habit of switching between becoming an artist to a doctor to an engineer to a ballerina and then a writer every other day. There was no more dirt that stuck under my nails from playing at the park, just like there was no more recess or snack time. And now, there will never be any more dismissal bells. No more meeting with your friends in the bathroom at a specific time. No more dropping off each other at your classes. No more school lunch that's complained about but always eaten. Our laughter won't echo through the building. Our bonds with each other will drift like the specks on a dandelion when blown away by a strong enough breeze, outgrowing each other in the process. We buried our seeds into the soil of KA, KB, KC. Our vines intertwined themselves with the legs of our chairs, fossiled their answers on the whiteboard, clung onto the ceilings in our hallways like a mural. The essence of the memories we made will dance through these stone walls. In the beginning, we'll collect each other the way dust gathers on tables, dressers, shelves, no matter how hard you try to clean it up, the specks always appear, our struggle on letting go. But 30 years from now, when our kids point at the pictures, I'll be honored to tell them the story of us. Thank you. All right, that wasn't too bad for the first one, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, the second poem I'm presenting is actually about uh, domestic abuse and domestic violence. Um, there are multiple people who are in these types of situations who fear getting out and don't have the resources in order to do that. So we need to shed more light on their situations and just bring awareness to the things that they have to deal through and the trauma that comes with the after effects. All right, this is Strained Vows. I've always felt like copper, an insignificant penny left to lay bare on the street. But you, you found me and tucked me into your pocket. Convinced of my worth, you placed your luck on me. I was the product of your persuasion Gold you thought you had acquired on your path. 
but soon you realized I was silver and didn't appreciate me tarnishing so fast. Those brown and reddish tints covering my skin withdrew your attraction from me? I found that humorous, for we both know they are only a collection of your rage, a visual representation of how you let out the stress of your days, my body used as your canvas, your fists representing the paint. You were a storm, the kind that brings destruction in its wake. Strong winds anchor my body to the floor, stripping me of my ability to vocalize the displeasure by simply sensing your aroma. A spiral arrangement of thunderstorms that produces heavy rain, silencing my screams as the acidic droplets burn on my arms, my knees, my scattered and bruised skin. I held my breath as you passed and bore your hurricane, repeating to myself, one more chance, one more breath, one more day. Let me do it for my child, whom I don't want to worry about whose house they'll be switching to day by day. But my glass is two-thirds empty. I am two minutes and ten seconds away from breaking down. I would prefer to tell, I would prefer, I would refer to us as part deception, part lust, part loathing, part mistrust. Two people who were in love with the idea of being loved, building their castles off of each other's spines and blood. We met in grief and found peace in each other's solitude, a fragmented, a fragmented adoration mistaken for our happily ever after. We continued our sentence with a semicolon and ignored the red squiggly line under the punctuation mark, suggesting that a period would be more favorable in our case. Now court cases are being appointed for us because we can't even have a conversation without our child covering his ears and chanting prayers, pleading for us to stop, to stop setting each other on fire and intensifying our flame of forest ignites. The product of our venomous vindications. Maybe in another lifetime, I would have considered us hope. Within a different timeline, we could have found each other when we weren't two fractured souls. I'd have called it forgiveness and not remembered us as war. But here, the cracks we thought we'd mended in each other's presence have bent and split. No matter the countless healing words we planted as the, build, as the binding in those gaps, our petals wilted and lost their grip on their stem, kidding ourselves into believing that we were indefinitely wrapped. I did not lie in my vows when I promised we'd part at death. For you are the grim reaper, and my payment was collected the day that your hands ended their first punch to my face. Our version of love was assaultive, mimicry, forged, under no condition to last forever. Thank you. Thank you. OK, so one more poem for the night. Um, this one is for someone who's actually sitting in the audience with us today. She is not enough to explain in words. I actually wrote this on my way here 20 minutes ago. <laughs> because there are just some people who it is so hard to put into words the things that they have done for you and how much they've helped you grow. write about when you want to. So we kind of have to do a last minute. Besides every other assignment I turn into her class is very last minute. <laughs> All right. We have building blocks. A student meets multiple teachers from when they first learned the alphabet to putting together stories and then one day writing an exam for a state test or writing a essay for a state exam. 
Each one has a different impact on their lives. But no amount of figurative language or poetry can be written to explain the staple this one had on mine. But you, infested, you infused in us with intelligence like the tea bags in your office, not only demonstrating how to write beyond MLA format, but reminding us to, to forgive our souls, to give to them just as much as we give to others. You invited our mistakes allowed them permission to sit on the chair in front of your desk and listen to what they had to say. And I held on to every word, strengthened my grip, wrapped my hands through the little spaces and grammar points in your sentences. I never thought that inspiration would be associated with five feet, blue eyes, and short brown hair. Thank you for tying the stack pages of my life with strings of guidance and compassion. When you're teaching your son to spell the word I-N-S-P-I-R-A-T-I-O-N, it will have a shared meaning with the word M-O-T-H-E-R. Thank you. <laughs>